you made a column, and I thought it was a great column, and you're one of the best when it comes to using words to your advantage. I don't know how you do it. Um, but you made the point that the Pirates basically need to clean house. And what was your reaction to that column? Yeah, I got a lot of reaction, most of it positive. Uh, you know, that's not a column I really enjoy writing. Uh, I like Clint Hurdle. I like Neil Huntington. I think, by and large, they've done a good job, you know, over the entire sweep of their tenure here, especially given the constraints of the nutting uh, checkbook. But, you know, uh, when teams do what the Pirates are doing now, people, people get fired. I mean, uh, as I pointed out, I think, in that column, you know, no one in town, Mike Tomlin, Mike Sullivan, uh, Jim Rutherford, Kevin Colbert would survive a, a four and twenty-four. It's just not done because those the other teams are competing. Uh, you know the, the the Steelers set out every every year to win the Super Bowl. It's their only goal. So a similar s situation with the Penguins. Uh, they're the Stanley Cup. Not interested in anything else. The Pirates apparently are not, uh, or at least Bob Nutting is not. Uh, and unless he does something along those lines, and you know just to put it bluntly, you know he's got to fire some people. Some high-profile management people have to be fired. If they're not, you know, uh, that'll tell you all you need to know about Bob Nutting, and it's that he's beyond shame at this point. Yeah, he's immune. He doesn't. If that's the case, now I think I agree with you, but I also think it will not happen. He owns uh, to, or owes those guys two years each. I think you'll see Ray Searage be sacrificed. You may see the head of the farm team, the scouting director, whatever. Well, They'll make changes there, but. As far as an entire house cleaning, I don't think you'll do that, but we'll see how it goes. Based on what we've seen, though, it is deserved. Let's go out to Rick in the North Hills, who's our first caller tonight. Hey, Rick, how are you? Uh, good. Good. Um, I, I was, you know, wanted to talk about the, the Pirates and, and Nutting. Um, I, I just, the guys just don't want to spend the money to compete and to have a championship-type team. And, you know, they can make all the changes they want with managers, general managers, whatever. And I, I don't think it's going to matter. I really don't. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, it's like beating a dead horse, really. All right, Rick. Um, here's the thing that has to change, the development of these guys. If you're going to play this game, with, you have a system which no floor, no cap. So that means you have every reason not to spend if you don't want to spend. It gives you an excuse not to spend, and that's not the way this should be. But if that's the case then, and if you really think you can compete, you better not miss on any draft picks. You better bring people in here. And quite frankly, that has been not very good over the 12 years. Yeah, well, that's almost impossible, Bob. I mean, people are going to miss on players. Well, I'm talking about the ones that they've missed on first-round picks. Well, people miss on first-round picks. Not too. as much as the Pirates have. Okay, but still, it would be a, a much faster solution is to have a payroll of 130 million. Oh, I agree with that. Million, yeah. But they're not they're not going to do it because they're not forced to do it. I mean, that's why I don't like the economics of baseball. Mm -hmm. They could sit there and say we don't have to do anything, right? They could. Where the they're Penguins and the Pir and the Steelers have to spend to a certain limit. They have to. I would like to see that the case in baseball. Say you have to spend 120 million in baseball. Therefore, you have to spend 120 million. You can't say 70 million. And you can't protect money for future arbitration cases that are going to come up. We heard that all of this past spring training. Well, we haven't spent because we have future arbitration. That, that's irrelevant. That, doesn't, that does not help this year's team. That's next year and the year beyond. It's always next year and the year beyond. Right, and that's the problem I, that I have with this team. Let's go to Marilyn in Munhall. What's up, Marilyn? Hey, Marilyn. Hi. I would like to congratulate the announcers on TV and radio for the Pirates. And the Pirates do something well, they commend them, and then when they do something that's not good, like an error or misrunning the bases, they report that, but then they don't dwell on it, they go on. And during this last half of the season, when everybody's downing the Pirates, I think they've showed a lot of professionalism and objectivity and have kept the game entertaining and interesting for the fans. Okay, I, I, you know, I, listen, that's a tough job to be the announcers in Ireland, um, but 
to me, it's not their job to make the game interesting and entertaining. It's the team that should make it interesting and entertaining. I think it's a difficult assignment to be with a team that's this bad and try to call their game every single night. It's, it's a tall assignment, don't you think? Yeah, it sure is, especially when you have, you know, you have a pregame show, a postgame show. It all amounts to about a five-hour infomercial for the ball club every night, and that's hard to keep selling. Uh, you know, when you're losing 24 out of 28, I think they do a good job. Let's go to Herb and Renfrew. What's up, Herb? How are you tonight? Welcome to the Sports Call. Go ahead. Good. Hi, Bob and Gene. Thanks for taking my call. Mm -hmm. sure. I got a steward question for Bob, but first of all, I wanted to thank Gene for his article in the Post and Sunday's yeah. Post because that about nothing really hit the nail on sure. the head. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And my uh, steward question, Bob, is uh, the Steelers are going to really miss offensive line coach Mike Bunchek, what he did with all those young players. Who took his job? I never heard. Sean Surratt, but he's pretty good. He was an understudy for Mike here for many years. He's been with the organization for a long time. So uh -oh. I still okay. think he's a pretty good guy. They knew what they had in him. People sometimes, I think, Gene thought, well, you got to go out and search everywhere. No, you don't. Yeah, they felt comfortable with him. No, they, re they really felt comfortable with him. As Bob said, he's been here a long time. He's well regarded. And, uh, you know, they were, they were happy to move him up without much of a search. All right, let's go to Jim Cokesburg. We haven't heard from Cokesburg in a while. What's up, Jim? How are you? Hey, uh, I just wanted to say that I think that it's time for uh, Hurdle to go. Um, his decisions are really bad. What he did to Brault yesterday was a disgrace. Um, I think if he had any sense of dignity whatsoever, he would resign right now. But he has got to go. All right. Thank you. Appreciate your input. Tim Err on Twitter says, uh, I remember an entirely different person while covering the team in his first few years in his league. I think this is, I'm sorry, in regard to Antonio Brown, which since I brought that up, I'll sure. ask you about Antonio Brown. Good. He lost his case today. He went mm -hmm. to the arbitrator and said, I want to wear my old helmet, and I don't care about the safety rules. I want to wear my own helmet. Well, it just so happens that the NFL, along with the Players Association, got together and came up with these safety regulations. Right. So he's going against his own union, essentially. Yeah, I mean, these protocols are in place after a lot of, a lot of negotiation, uh, you know, triggered by a you know billion-dollar lawsuit years ago. And uh, you know, only Antonio Brown or someone like him could think that you know. I don't have to abide by these things. I mean, it, it sounds from Antonio's tone that he found out today that, yes, he does have to abide from them. Or he could retire. I guess his retirement is off then. No, he's not going to retire. He okay. needs the money too much. But the question is where his feet hill in time. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Rourke could uh, tweet before we go to break here. This is from Kevin Davis to you and me, Gene. He says, regardless of what industry is being discussed, when the owner and the upper management sets up middle management, as the rank and file for fa file for failure, can the lower level employees, including middle management, be held accountable? Uh, I'm not sure I understand. I, that, I think but what I he's think saying the is the owner. Yes. If the owner doesn't want to help you out, how can you blame middle management? Well, yeah, I understand that question. I mean, uh, you know, it's very possible that Neil Huntington and uh, Clint Hurdle are aware of that situation. That they're, you know, they're. They may feel that there isn't a lot of pressure on them because Hurdle, because Nutting knows, uh, you know, he's not giving those guys enough to work with, and the, you know, there's a general agreement on that. Well, if there's an agreement, there's a comfort. If there's a comfort, that's not good, and right. it should not be tolerated. That's not what this is all about. Right. Anyway, we're going to take a break here. We have Kurt, we have Greg, we have Mike. We have more calls on the way. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, seven nights a week on Pittsburgh CW.